I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. In today's world, we are all about high tech. Everything has to be electronic and plugged in. In this video, we're going to ignore high tech and discover the amazingly efficient and easy low tech techniques of polishing, buffing, and finishing your jewelry projects. I'll demonstrate some tricks of the trade that will help you finish your project easier, faster, and with less hassle. There are three basic low-tech categories of polishing and buffing your jewelry projects. The first one is filing, sanding, or emmering. These are very abrasive cutting actions and wear down the metal quickly. Let me introduce you to some of the low-tech tools in this category, and I'm sure you're familiar with some of them. And of course, the first one that is the most abrasive in this category is the file. There's all different types of files, uh, different shapes, sizes, uh, and, and teeth sizes on them. And we'll do a whole video on files someday. Uh, but uh, these are the most abrasive in this category, but they will shape your metal and but leave a lot of scratches on them. So we have to be aware of that. Uh, and our next tool in here is emery cloth and emery paper. It's an emery grit that's been uh, put onto the papers and cloths. It's just like sandpaper, uh, but it's an emery grit, which is a real good grit for uh, sterling silver and any of the other non-ferrous metals. And so this, we can work our, our metal down and again, but it will leave lots of scratches. This guy right here, this is really a neat thing that I have discovered over the years. Uh, let me put a piece of paper behind this so maybe you can see, see this a little bit better. This is an emery tape or an emery cord. Uh, it comes in a spool and uh, it has emery grit embedded onto the cord and you can slip it into small areas on a piece of metal, attach the other to the bench vise or, uh, or a nail and pull it tight and then you can work your metal back and forth on this cord. Really, really cool. It's very abrasive and it will leave lots of marks on it. So make sure that you can get in there and, and polish and buff those out. And we'll talk about that in just a minute too. And last but not least in this category are these guys right here. These are, are emery buffs or buff sticks. Uh, and I, I like to use a wide variety of shapes and sizes so I can get into different parts of my uh, projects and work on them. This is really, really a great tool. Uh, it's one of the most low-tech tools and probably one of the most uh, overlooked tools. Uh, it's really very, very uh, good for working your metal down. You can get your emery paper, your emery claws attached to it, and uh, then you can start working on the projects just like you would a file, and it works that metal down really, really quickly and easily. You don't have to be fighting a piece of paper that will leave it in different, uh, different dimensions and angles or putting it on the bench and working it like this. You can grab this stick and start working on the piece of jewelry and it'll, it'll smooth it out really nice. And then you can use the different grades of emery cloth and emery paper. So then you can get down to the real super fine 4000 and start working it back and forth. And with these, you don't have to work in one direction like you do on a file, but you can take and scrub this back and forth here and it'll really, really uh, bring out the nice shine in your, in your project. But it will leave some scratches, so we'll, this is the first step now. So, so let me just take a minute here and I'll show you how to make one of these. You can buy these at any jewelry supply house. They come in all different shapes and sizes and price tags. And let me show you how to make one of these. It's really easy. I like to use the paint stirrers from the paint store. Number one, they're free and they do have a nice little flexibility to them. They're nice and thin and uh, they're really a good size for using for the buff stick. So get them from your paint store and then uh, take a piece of emery cloth or emery paper, it all depends on what size that you want to use. And then we're going to be putting some tape on either side. 
I just like to use just regular old masking tape, lay it down on there, and then put it halfway on the edge. Really easy, quick and easy here. Lay it on there. Then lay your buff stick on the edge. And then you want to take and score it with a utility knife along the edge where it's going to bend over. This will make the emery cloth uh, a little bit sharper. So then just lay the masking tape over and bend it over once. And then go ahead and score it again. You don't want to cut through the emery cloth or the tape. Just, just score it and then bend it over. Make it nice and tight in here. Go ahead, score it again. Roll it over. Score it again. Roll it over. And then you can do the final score. If you want to, you can cut that off even, or you can just roll it back on over and then push the tape down. And you've got yourself a buff stick with emery on it. Now you can see how this kind of fluffs out here, so that's why you can cut that off if you wish. Now, as you're working, you're going to wear this out and don't be afraid to wear it down to nothing because then it's nice and smooth and you can use it for an, another section of your project. But when, you're, when you've worn it out, all you have to do is simply hold the tape here and rip the emery. Let's say if we ripped it all the way to this other side. And then you can simply rip it off rid of the extra tags and you've got new emery to work with. Simple, easy, lots of fun to make. Real quick. Well that was really easy and you just saved yourself a whole bunch of money. And you can make them to any size or shape that you want that's going to fit the the type of jewelry projects that you're making. They're super easy. These are just really really cool. I love these buff sticks or emery sticks and uh, also in this category too, I don't want to forget uh, that you can use steel wool and scotch brights too. And these will leave a nice smooth finish and get rid of some of the um, a little bit more deep gouges from some of your more aggressive emery claws. So don't forget to use the steel wool scotch brights and even some brass brushes. Work just great. The second category is polishing. This is also a cutting action, but not as abrasive as filing and emery. Many of the scratches are removed in this step. The tools that we use for polishing would be, aha, here's our buff stick again, but this one is a little bit different. This does not have emery on it. What I've done is I've taken the stick and uh, glued a piece of leather onto it, and then that way I can take my polishing compound and rub it onto the stick and coat that leather with the polishing compound and then I can go right to my piece of jewelry and start polishing it with this uh, buff stick and it will start taking out all the little tiny scratches that were put in from let's say the steel wall. So I can really polish this up very easily with this stick. Uh, that way I can get to these areas that are, that are accessible, but there may be some other areas that aren't as accessible. Let's say for uh, a small piece that has little tiny twists to it, it's kind of difficult to get your buff stick into those areas. So what we can do is we can take a cotton string. Just take a regular cord cotton string and we can slip your piece on here and then 
this is really cool because you can get into some small areas with it and uh, it's just so so easy you'll go oh I should have thought of this a long time ago but take your polishing compound and start rubbing it onto the string and put a good coat of polishing compound on there and by the way you can use any of the polishing compounds that are on the market um, you can use triple E white diamond uh, there's all, all sorts of types uh, just check with your with your supply person and uh, you'll, you'll see that there's so many that you can choose from and one chunk is gonna last you a long time so take your polishing compound put it on the string and start rubbing the piece back and forth on this pull it tight anchor it on your bench either to your bench pin or uh, a nail or screw whatever put it in your vise and just rub that piece back and forth and that will start polishing down into those little tiny cracks and uh, make it uh, nice and bright and shiny in there this is where we were talking about the uh, abrasive cord this will take a lot of these scratches off that are from the abrasive cords too so use that and then the third thing in this category this polishing category is this tool right here again many many people uh, don't use this a lot I use the burnisher an awful lot in this particular step especially in areas where you can't get the the uh, the string or the buffing sticks into there to polish it uh, you can use a burnisher and this will take out scratches very very neat technique here and this has been around for lots of years uh, the Egyptians Etruscans were using this uh, back in the day and they would polish whole pieces with a burnisher so you can take and start rubbing it over the uh, piece of jewelry wherever the scratches are and it will burnish out all those scratches and make it really nice and shiny just as long as you have a good burnisher that has a good smooth surface on it uh, protect your burnishers too I always throw a little protector on here so it doesn't get crudded up and it also stops them from rusting too so this is a straight burnisher one that I use for um, for setting bezels and so on and getting into those areas and pop, polishing them up with the burnishing tool so take and start burnishing on those use this a lot try it you're going to be really amazed at how this will take off scratches and that you can get into those small areas and and polish them up i even have a really small burnisher here and this one i made from a dental tool and then uh, cut it off polished it all up then put it on a pin vise and then I can get into super super small areas and rubbing it back and forth and it will polish up that little area so don't forget the buff sticks with the polishing compound on it the, the cotton strings and the burnisher really great tools for this step the third category is buffing traditionally this is called a coloring action and not a cutting action this step normally doesn't remove any metal and brings out the final luster of your piece the tools that we we'll use in this buffing step are all based around this this is jewelers rouge or red rouge this is a the coloring action that I was talking about and we'll be using it on our good old friend the buff stick this again is a little bit different than the other buff sticks instead of the emery or the leather uh, this has some felt on it a nice and smooth uh, felt and again you apply it the same way as you did on the polishing stick so we'll take our red rouge and we'll rub it onto that felt and get a good coating of the red rouge onto that and then we can take it to our piece and start bringing it up buffing it up and bringing up that high luster with the jeweler's rouge 
again, we can use a cotton string too to get into those small areas. Just simply again, rub the rouge on your cotton string. And then finally, uh, the rouge cloth. This is a commercially made rouge cloth and it has the rouge on one side and then the other side it has uh, a nice smooth cloth that will help also to bring out the high luster in the piece. So you simply just open it up, put your piece in there and start rubbing it by hand. And it's amazing how well these, these uh, buffing and polishing cloths work. Just rub it down and boy, it just really brings out the nice high luster in your piece. So again, using the jeweler's rouge or the red rouge on your buff stick, your string, or the cloth that's already embedded. And these are not very expensive. Uh, purchase one and they'll last a long time for you. By using these low-tech polishing and buffing techniques in each of the three categories, you will advance the quality of your jewelry without having to plug in any expensive equipment. Also, it's really cool to know you are using and carrying on the traditional jewelry techniques that have been around for hundreds of years. I'm Greg Greenwood and I hope you've learned from this video. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.